Praise the Lord. Amen. I greet you all in Jesus' mighty name. We are so happy and so honored this morning again to be bringing to you the word of God. And we want to bless the Lord for this morning. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the gift of this day. We count it a privilege to partake of your kingdom and the blessings that you have given us. We bless you for the life this day and for the life eternal that we have found in Christ Jesus. We thank you. We ask you to bless this day and the message and that you shall use us to deliver your word to the glorification of your holy name in Jesus mighty name Amen. Amen Yes, every one of you is welcome or as you have been told you know this morning we come to you to bring to you the word of God from or Q, uh, from uh, Unity FM. And uh, I want to say we are so honored for our team leader, Reverend Dr. James, for granting us this opportunity to be ministering to you. Uh, I said my name is Pastor Habat. And we are here together with my my friend Levi. And also thank you, Sam, for being there on the on the media. Sam media Hallelujah. Amen. Today we want to share something briefly. And we want to learn a lesson from the parable of a good Samaritan. And uh, we also want to answer one of the fundamental questions in Christian faith. That uh, the, the good Samaritan here asked Jesus. He said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And our reading today is taken from the book of Luke chapter 10. Verses 25 to 37. I would like to read briefly before we go so far. The Bible says, Bible on Verse number 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? I said this is one of the most fundamental questions that Christians ask themselves. And uh, we want to answer, Jesus said, what is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus. And who is my neighbor? We will be able to answer this question as we continue to share. Jesus, in, Jesus, Jesus replied, yes, a, doctor. a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of the robbers. They stripped him of his clothes and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now, as you continue to read down there, Jesus tells the story of how the priest came across this man. 
kita mea la mdogo nyote cho baru atikere daronia. And the Levite also came. Kedu Levi. The Bible says they pass on the other side of the road. But a Samaritan, Samaria, when he came across this man, he was able to help him and took him to an inn where he could be taken care of. We shall continue to read and go down there later. But what we want to emphasize this morning is this question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Maybe we begin by understanding what eternal life is. The word eternal life has been used interchangeably but uh, with the word the kingdom of god or the kingdom of heaven in the bible and they are used to mean the same thing eternal life the book of matthew mostly referred to it as the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven but we want to look at what is eternal life. As we answer this question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The word eternal life refers to the presence of God through the passion of Christ Jesus manifested by the fruits of the Holy Spirit. When you have God, which is possible through Christ Jesus, it has to be manifested by the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Now this is how we tell that this person has eternal life. You know, in, in the past, as I had this thinking of eternal life. That we shall inherit eternal life when Jesus comes back. But when a man receives Christ Jesus. And receives the Holy Spirit. This person is able to inherit eternal life. Eternal life is not something we are going to enjoy when we only go to heaven. Yes, we have eternal life right here on earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5. Bible about the fruits of the Holy Spirit that we have read here. A person who has eternal life should be able to demonstrate the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We should be able to see joy, peace, patience, kindness in the life of this person. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now when your life exhibit this kind of character then we are able to see that the kingdom of God has come to this person. The Bible says when Jesus entered the house of uh, uh, when he enters the house of uh, the tax collector Bible the Bible says, Bible cover. when he shared with him on the same table, he was convicted of the word of God. And he rose up by himself. He picked up his wealth. And he said, I'm going to give up give this back if I have cheated somebody. And he started giving out the money that he had kept. He was convicted of the evil of the bad things that he had done in life. And when Jesus saw him, he said the kingdom of God has come to this house. He was able to read that there has been a a tremendous change in the life of Zakaya. 
And he was able to read that he has received the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The people who have received the kingdom of God. The people who belong to Christ Jesus. Have crucified the sinful nature. With their passions and with their desires. Since we live by the Spirit, we keep in steps with the Holy Spirit. So we are saying that a person who has this eternal life can be read by the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And that person does not exhibit the sinful nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us in Galatians in the previous verses that we have not read if you you see from verse 19 in chapter 5 the bible tells us bible and this is the and this is the sinful nature of man hallelujah hallelujah i want us to read briefly from galatians chapter number 5 verse number 19 the bible says bible and the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, uh, impurity, uh, idolatry, uh, witchcraft, uh, hatred, uh, discord, uh, jealousy, and a number of them that has been mentioned in this place. But when, when a person is exhibiting this kind of character, then the Bible is telling us that he's still living in the sinful nature. This person has not yet received the kingdom of God. So what must I do in order to inherit the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God alone gives eternal life to those who chooses to know him and to know his son Christ Jesus. Actually, the book of John chapter 17 verse number 3 defines for us what eternal life is. The Bible says, and this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God. And your son Christ Jesus whom you have sent. Praise the Lord. And this is eternal life. Eternal life comes with the knowledge of God and his son Christ Jesus. When you know God. When you know his son Christ Jesus. You have received eternal life. Praise the Lord. Now what does it mean to know? To know means to be able to understand who Jesus is. It means for you to understand who God is. The word knowledge comes from two main words according to the dictionary. When you know somebody, such a person must have been somebody who is close to you. Who can as well be defined as a friend? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other thing is, you must have had some relationship with such a person. Then you can be able to to be said you know such a person. Praise the Lord most high. When you know somebody, when you know Jesus, it means that you understand who Jesus is very well. Many of us do have friends. I would like you to think about who is your best friend. This could be the person that you have lived with for some 
time. Mano bero ngatora me kwa kere bero kere pikare mo. You understand what he likes and what he dislikes. In yango en pe mari ngo en maro. You understand the desires and the needs of such a person. In yang mi remere kere jama enuti amit. Because when you know somebody, pien kai ngi ngatora. You begin to develop trust in that person. Yero gero geni kom dano no. And that is where friendship begins to come. En ka no wore cha herie. And you begin to have deeper love for such a person. So when the Bible asks this question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? This person wanted to understand eternal life. The Bible tells us, Jesus responded with a story. He said a man was coming down from Jerusalem and was going down to Jericho. And uh, on the way, Yo. he met with these robbers there who, take it yak here. who beat him and stripped him of his clothes. He, he was, was left half dead. But there comes a priest passing on the same way. The Bible says he passed on the other side of the road. The priest on the same way then came the Samaritan. And the Bible says this man showed compassion to the man. He showed love to this man. He showed kindness to this man. He showed goodness to this man. Now you begin to understand that our definition of eternal life can be seen in the life of this person. We see the presence of God in the life of this person through the person of Christ Jesus and being demonstrated by the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We see that this man has love. He has joy. He has shown kindness. He has shown goodness. We are able to see. And we can be able to tell that there is a fruit of eternal life in the life of this person. Praise the Lord Jesus. You could have asked this question to yourself. What can I do to inherit eternal life? You need to know God. God. You need to know Jesus Christ. You need to receive him as your Lord and Savior. That it may be part of your life. That you may, you should, that you, you, you receive the Holy Spirit. And you are able to demonstrate the character of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we get to the next part of the question which says, what must I do? You want to inherit eternal life. As this man asked the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? We have looked at what eternal life is. So we come to this question. What must I do? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to know Jesus. And knowing Jesus is a choice. The Lord has given us the privilege to choose. Knowing Jesus is a choice. This morning I have been sent to you to help you to understand what eternal life is that you would desire to have eternal life. You would desire to be a child of the kingdom of God. We understand what eternal life is and have a desire that will lead you to do what will take you to eternal life. You need to know Jesus. I say knowing is a choice. Let me tell you something. Every one of us belongs to a family. And we belong to a family by birth. 
Because you have been born to that family. And so are you a member of that family. The same principle applies to the kingdom of God. If you want to inherit eternal life, you have to be born to the family of God. You have to be born again into the family of God so that you can be part of the kingdom. And that is why Jesus said in his conversations with Nicodemus, he said, unless a man is born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We find this in the book of John chapter 3 from verse number 3. Hallelujah. And Nicodemus asked this question. How can a man be born again when he is grown up, when he is old? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nicodemus wanted to understand still this question. Of how can a man be born again? But I want to I want us to get back to the to the to, to the main theme of our sharing. What must I do to inherit eternal life? We are learning a lesson from the parable of the Good Samaritan. Answering this fundamental mental question in the Christian faith. What must I do in order to inherit eternal life? The Bible tells us about this good Samaritan that he showed love, he showed kindness, he showed goodness, he showed faithfulness to a person that he didn't know. And the Bible is telling us this man who asked Jesus a question he wanted to justify himself. And he went ahead and asked the second question. He said, who is my neighbor? If I want to inherit eternal life, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your strength, and with all your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he went down to the second one. And, and love your neighbor as yourself. And he asked this question. Who is my neighbor? And we find that explanation in the story. So I want to ask you also this question. Do you love God? Do you love your neighbor? Because Jesus is telling us to inherit eternal life. You need to love Love God. You need to love your neighbor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do we love God? How do we love God? Jesus said, it is found in these two great commandments. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. So we want to tell you this, that if you want to inherit eternal life, love God, love your neighbor. How do we tell that a man loves God? Maybe you have a friend you love so much. Maybe you love a ministry you love so much. Maybe you are, you 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 have you have a, a government that you love so much. You have a community, a group of people that you love so much. But how do we tell that someone loves God? When a man loves God, such a man will love the things that God loves. When a man loves God, I want to emphasize this point. Such a man will love the things that God loves. God loves his people. He loves the people that he has created. The Bible tells us in John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever 
Believe lives in him may not perish but have everlasting life for God so loved God just loved the world he loved the world the way it is and the Bible says he gave his son he gave his son Christ Jesus hallelujah, hallelujah. to die for the souls of his people God loves his people he saw that it was necessary and he sacrificed his son to die for the sake of the world. If you love God, you will love the things that God loves. God loves his people. The Bible tells us there is no greater love than this that a man lays down his life for the sake of others. Jesus laid down his life for the sake of the others. He laid his life down for his people. When a man loves God, such a man will love God's people to the extent of laying down thy life for the sake of God's people. We see that Jesus demonstrated this according to the book of John 15, 13. Now we come to the question that the man asked that who is my neighbor? And I want to say your neighbor is the good people who are around you there. Yes, these people that you are with in the same office. These people that you are working with them in the praying with them in the same church. These people who are in the neighborhood where you stay. These people that you are with in the business place. These are the neighbors. This is what Jesus is saying. That you love the Lord God and love your neighbors. Your neighbor is this God's people that has been positioned in different places around your life. Now to say you love God, you need to love these people. You need to demonstrate to them that you are a child of God. You know we have people who come to church and lift up their hands and say God we love you. But when you move back to their places of work when you move back to their business places you find a different thing they do not have love for people you find these are the same people who are cheating their friends they use skills that has been uh, that has been uh, the skills that has been uh, be, been disturbed. Yes, they are not using the standard scale. These are people who have hatred with the people at their workplace. These are the people who have wrangles with their friends in the business place. But when we come to church, God will love you. You are holy. You are worthy to be praised. We can only demonstrate to God that we love him. When we love his people, the people that God has created. Hallelujah. Actually, the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4 verse 20 that there is no man who can claim to love God when he hates his own brother. It is a big deception. It is a lie. You are deceiving yourself. It is a big lie from the pit of hell. You cannot deceive God that I love you when you hate your brother. Your neighbor is sleeping hungry. The neighbor is suffering near you. You cannot support when you have God has blessed you with the resources. You cannot support the people who are around your life. You are so proud you have, a, you have a bad name in the community and you don't care about that you say for me as long as I serve God as long as I am serving my God 
Pio bana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can only serve God by serving God's people. The biblical principle is different from the world principle. If you love God, the principle says, you can demonstrate to him that I love you my God by loving the people who are around you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When a man loves God, such a man who loves the things that God loves. God loves his people. We have seen in the scripture. He gave his son. Jesus laid down his life for the sake of his people. And this is love. The Bible says there is no greater love than this. I want to ask you this question. Do you really love God? What shows that you love God? Do the people you work with really confirms that you love God? Do the people you do business with confirms that you love God? Do your neighbors confirms that you love God? Because we can only know you love God by loving the people that God has placed around you. And this is eternal life that we may know you the only true God and your son Christ Jesus whom you have sent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we say we love God we have known God we have known Jesus Christ. And when we know God, and we, when we know the Lord Jesus Christ, then we know what they love. We know what God loves. So when you know what God loves, we can conclude that you are a friend of God. You love God. You know what God loves. And you love what God loves. And so this takes us back to the great commandments. Where the Bible tells us Jesus responded to the man that he responded to the question of eternal life. He said, Love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your spirit, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. When you do this, you have eternal life. And we can be able to confirm that when your life experience demonstrates the spirit of God demonstrate that the spirit of God is resident in your life. And we can only know that when we know you love people. You are filled with the joy, with the peace, with the patience. You are filled with the kindness. We can be able to tell that this man loves God. Let me tell you, there are people out there who have have lived a kind of life that is very far from what God desires. But for them, they think they are serving God. They think they are loving God. They think they are serving God. They are giving to the church. They are giving to the ministers. They are coming to church every day. They are doing everything in church. And people think these people are doing the right thing. But God has a different definition of a person who loves him. He sees that you love him from how you love his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not only taking a front seat in the church and giving offertories and giving tithe. It is not only fulfilling the fulfilling the, the things that the Bible asks us to do which are physical like charity yes helping people who are in need the bible tells us bible of a man called Nick, uh, called Nick, I mean of a, a man called Cornelius in the bible 
In the book of Acts chapter 10. The Bible says he was a good man. He was a good man. But this man didn't know Jesus. The Bible tells us. He helped people. He helped the need, the needy. He supported people who were in need. He was a prayerful man. This man was called a good man. Praise the Lord. But he had not received Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. And as we see from our principles in our reading today, a man can only be defined as a man who loves God. When a man loves the things that God loves, such a man loves the people of God and is ready to give himself for the sake of others. Such a man has come out of the sinful nature. The sinful nature which we have seen in Galatians chapter 5. He has come out of sexual immorality. He has come out of abuse, of hatred, of every kind of wickedness. And this man loves God. He has changed. He has received Jesus. And he has love. He has joy. He has peace. He has patience. Hallelujah. What must I do? Do to receive eternal life. The Bible tells us love God, love God, love your neighbor. And who is your neighbor? We say that person close to you. Begin to demonstrate love to them. Begin to show them the love of God. Because the word of God has said in the book of First John chapter 4 verse 20 you cannot tell God I love you when you hate your brother. It is a lie. It is deception. Begin to love people and God will know that you love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you love God? Do you love him? Would you like to make a choice today? Because we said loving God is a choice. To know Jesus is a choice. If you had lived in deception, if you had lived in deception, and you have come to understand this morning, through this sharing, that you can love God, God, by loving the people that God has put around you and showing them the kindness, the love, the joy that God requires. I have been sent to you this morning. I have been sent to you this morning to show you what the love of God is, what eternal life is. And you have to make a choice this morning. It is a choice. I want to ask you to think about this. Would you like to make a choice this morning? Would you like to know what eternal life is and to partake of eternal life? I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Maybe you seriously want to be inherited eternal life. You seriously want to inherit eternal life. So I want you to I want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you can just lift up your hand from wherever you are. It is about you receiving Jesus. Acknowledging him as your Lord and Savior. And when he comes into your life, he comes with the Holy Spirit. Follow me in this prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you this morning. I acknowledge that I have gone the wrong way. And now, I want to partake of eternal life. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me of the sins I've committed. I repent of my sins. And I ask you to come into my life and make me a new person. And put in my life thy spirit that I will be able to demonstrate the love of God and be a 
partaker of God's kingdom and be a partaker of eternal life in Jesus name if you have made this prayer you have become a member of the kingdom of God you are destined to inherit eternal life you now have to walk in the love of God the true love of God that the scripture has shown us today thank you so much I said I am Pastor Habat and this is Truth Evangelistic Fountain Ministry. We are ministries. so happy to have shared with you the gospel. May the Lord God bless you.